Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam today to talk again about dual reading for beginners. So in the last week, we especially looked at pairing with the left sword while simultaneously striking with the right sword. And today we are going to use our left sword a bit more active. And for that, we we'll look into our first exercise that is easily drillable solo. So when you're at your own or with a partner as well. And that exercise is the dual ribbon cut. So first let's talk about the normal ribbon cut. It's nothing else than like drawing a ribbon in front of yourself. And that's nothing else than going up with the falso, so a false edge ascending cut from one side, and then going down with a descending cut with a true edge from the same side. And then from the other side, so the terminology here would be falso dritto and man dritto, and from my non-dominant side it's the falso manco and the reverso. And if we uh, practice with this, and we can do it with our main hand and our off hand. We want to start to use it at the same time, in the same manner. This is fairly relaxed, hopefully, doing it both at the same time. And then we are going to use it in the way that Marotzut actually teaches us. So, from a point forward guard with the one sword and a point down guard with the other sword, both on the same side, we want to now use the falso and the mandrito with the left sword, because remember, mandrito with the left sword comes from the left side. And with the right sword, we're going with the falso and reverso into mirrored positions. So with the left sword, we start lower, but we end higher, okay? And with the, uh, with the left sword, we start higher and we end lower, okay? So from here, both at the same time, lifting up with the falso, going around and striking around. And this exercise is actually already fairly complex, I'd say. And you can practice really hitting with the false edge of your lower sword into the false edge of your upper sword to cross them. So this would be the false edge the falsi, and from here you can strike around with the true edge. To one side and to the other. And you can use this with footwork when you strike from the left, that your left leg goes forward. But you can also do it in the other fashion, that if you strike from the right, that your left leg goes so forward. So this would be in Marazzo as well. And this can be a fairly nice, relaxed solo drill on your own. If you want to vary it a bit, you can use Manciolino's variation, who goes even higher with both sorts. So not in stretta and larga, but he goes into guardi di testa and with lower in a stretta position. But from here, it's the same thing. Falsi and true edge cuts from the same side. So this would be the solo drill. And now look at it, uh, now let's look at it with a partner and how it's applied. So, Stefan. Thank you very much. So, the first part you could do is to just go into a crossing parry with your swords. So for example, if Stefan attacks to my right side, so he attacks with the reverso, and just for you, since it's mentioned in the last time in the comments, you don't even, for these uh, beginner exercises at the first time, you don't need a lot of swords at all. It's okay if one of you practices with two swords and the other one with just one th sword, which could be also a two-handed sword as well. It doesn't matter too much. So if Stefan strikes to my yeah, to my right side with the reverso from here. I go into my false edges. So like this, I'm in this cross position and then I strike again from the other side. 
And you see that this leaves me with one edge, one sword still parrying and controlling the other weapons while I have one sword free to strike to the body of my opponent, which is quite useful. So if he strikes, for, for example, at Mandrito, I can control this sword on the one side with my outside sword, so in this uh, case with my left sword, and then strike around with the other to the hands, to the head, or to the legs, okay? Depending on, on what you want to do. Another possibility is, of course, to just use this, like, crossing motion, which Marozzo also tells us, so this would be another drill, to just use one sword to put under the true edge of your upper sword and then cross them either on the one side or on the other. So if he strikes a mandrito, you could also go with cross swords here. And then you're lower with both swords. So really striking around isn't too feasible now. But Morozzo gives you an easy counter from here, which is still controlling with one sword to your upper left and then striking low while going forward, then backward again, and then moving out. Okay, so cross position isn't really too bad with two swords because you can block safely and then immediately in the tempo after while still controlling with one sword, you attack with the other, okay? So once again, uh, let's look at it against a reverser from the other side. So from here, I wouldn't strike around because my own right sword is in the way of my left, but I could easily strike low, okay? And then go out here. Great. So once you mastered these two exercises, we can use our two ribbon cuts in a more offensive manner. So let's say Stefan is in a point forward guard and we want to attack him. So one thing we could use is like doing our falso with the upper sword, like really small. And you know, if you practice falsi a lot, you will notice that they're really a kind to just a thrust. So if I do this falso in a manner of like a thrust, this would be quite endangering for Stefan. And he would be compelled to push this to his inside, my outside, if I'm talking from the right person. So if I now go here with the right sword, it's really nice to get even more control and push around to free up my left sword. So once again, from here, two falsi, or maybe a thrust with the upper sword and a falso with the lower to go into the mandrito with the left sword. Or from the other side, this could be possible as well. Thrusting with the upper sword, either you get it in or not. That doesn't really matter too much because you get control over the weapon of your opponent. Okay, and then if you're uh, quite familiar with this, you could do this in a more freely manner. You could move around. Once again, try to get a hold of the sword of your opponent and then push your cut or your thrust in. Okay, so we hope this second video on dual weeding for beginners is quite helpful to you. We hope to see you in the next one. Until then, train hard and ciao.